I'm Scott Shepard. I'm one of three dedicated electrical specialists here at Erie Tech. And today we're going to talk about Yaskawa's uh, drive simulator software. Uh, what's cool about this is uh, we can use this to help customers uh, over the phone with any kind of issues that they may have with the drive after they purchased it. We can simulate the programs that they have in the drive now, uh, simulate the wiring that they've got, and hopefully we can troubleshoot the, the problem that they're having you know, locally here. Another tool is, that we use it for is to uh, have them get familiar with the drive. If we have a brand new customer who's never used the Yaskawa drive before, this is a great way for them to actually get their fingers on it, uh, do the programming, uh, simulate the wiring, and see what they think about it prior to purchase. So it's a great tool um, on both fronts. So let's get started. So here's the software itself. Um, just like anything with uh, Windows, uh, you can open up a new project um, any which way. Hit the new key right here, do file new, um, or simply go here to, it says right in the middle of the screen, new simulator project, which is obviously what I would do um, most of the time. So let's do that. Let's do new simulator project. You can give it a name if you want to. You know, today I'll just call it test. We'll hit OK. And this particular uh, simulator actually is for three drives. Um, it defaults for the GA500, which is their micro drive up to 30 horsepower, 460 uh, constant torque. But if you do the drop down, it also gives you the ability to play around with the GA800 and a U1000. The GA500 and the 800 are the two is, uh, newest drives that Yaskawa has, and uh, the U1000 is their line regenerative drive. But for today, we're going to talk about the GA500. Like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you can use this simulator uh, for a uh, brand new application. Uh, you never played with a drive before. Uh, maybe you have a drive on order and it's not in yet. So what you could do though is, you, you know that you've ordered part number X, Y, and Z. So what's nice is that you can actually pick that model number and, and get right down to the actual the voltage and the current rating of the drive that you have on order. In this case, I'm gonna pick a, the four amp drive 460 volt, which is a one slash two horsepower VFD. Something else that's very important is this uh, software version or a firmware version, if you will, that's in the drive. So let's just say you actually have a drive there and uh, you, you've received it. Uh, if you looked at the sticker on the side of the drive and it has software version, whatever, um, you can actually uh, drop down and pick that version to match what you physically have there in your facility because uh, this is important, because sometimes these older versions will have newer features, older features that uh, aren't limited to that particular firmware or software version. So it's nice to marry uh, this software version to what you actually have. And that number is actually, is actually located, on the, again, on the side of the drive. It's on the white sticker. It's called a PRG number, Paul Robert George number. And that's what you want to match up with this. I'll go with 16 because that's the most recent one. Um, out of the box, these drives are open with vector. Uh, we can make them a few different choices, volts per hertz, and a few other ones here, but open with vector is out of the box, so we'll leave that alone. Um, something else here for a drop down is region. Default, of course, is the American spec. You know, if you're a world traveler, you can pick the Japanese or European, but obviously here in the States, we want the American spec. So at this point, uh, we're going to hit select drive, and it'll get all the parameters loaded for that particular horsepower. And at this point, we want to hit the start simulating, start programming simulator. Um, what's nice about this, and honestly, I would uncheck this after your first time playing with it, this kind of just tells you what's in the simulator itself, kind of like an overview of uh, what it can do for you, what it can't do for you, that kind of stuff. So just a, a simple overview of what exactly you can do or what you can't do with it. And one of the things, by the way, you can't do with this is an auto-tune, and we'll talk about that when we uh, get to that point. So simply just close that out. So this... Um, Area here shows you actually what the drive is. Um, this is the actual look of the outside of the uh, GA500. And what we can do here, which is kind of nice, you can actually hit this uh, little red arrow and hit open and you take the cover off. And this is exactly what the drive looks like on the inside of the drive. Uh, the various terminals, uh, an option card slot, uh, the relay out or the relay itself. And of course, with the uh, 
power connections would go. So that's what it looked like without the, the connection to it. Over here, uh, we're referencing uh, some S switches. Um, and those switches actually in real world are physically located right here. This is S1, that's S2, and this is the S3. So uh, those three switches are uh, actually represented over here. Uh, so it's kind of nice. Um, so again, inside of here, you've got these terminals, which obviously you can't see. But uh, they're represented here through S1 through S7. These are the actual, the field connections, the actual where you bring your start stop wires, your remote reset, that kind of stuff into these S terminals. Those are the ones that are down here on the left, on the bottom. Also down here on the bottom are, uh, again, you can't see these numbers, but they're the MA, MB, and MC. That's these right here. That's your relay output. This is a, a Form C, one amp, a 250 volt rated uh, relay that's uh, sitting there ready to be used. And that's what this is representing. And of course, there's a few other things in here we'll talk about as we progress. There's another red arrow. And what this is, is a, a little trap door where you can bring in a USB cable. If you use the uh, Scott Drive Wizard industrial software. And uh, what that does is that allows you to do any uploading, uh, monitoring, downloading, of uh, the parameters uh, with this with that external software so that's where you actually make your connections there so let's get started uh, what's nice about this is that it has a power switch so obviously just like with any other drive you have to turn the power on so let's do that turn the power on and that's what the drive looks like out of the box uh, obviously this is a programming uh, exercise today but this is what uh, this screen looks like when it's uh, out of the box. This is the what's called the home screen or the F screen is what we say during training. And uh, so this is a normal look to the drive. A few of the keys here is an escape key. We'll talk about that when we get into the programming. But here's a local remote key as well. So if you want to run it from the keypad, you can do that just like you would if you had the drive in front of you. So here we can hit the, the run key. We can see the little run light blink. We can give it a speed reference and we'll see that the motor over here is starting to turn so again just like if you're in front of the drive we'll stop it and we'll go back into remote um speaking of remote let's do that so over here i mentioned that these are the real world connections for uh, bringing your wires in from whatever your start stop uh, buttons or your PLC output or pressure switch or what have you. S1 is your forward input. So if we give it a forward command, we'll see that the, actually the run light is on, but it's not running, it's not doing anything until we actually give it an analog input. That's what this is over here. So we give a little bit of analog input and we have our, our motor spin, which is very nice. And if we want it to reverse, then we would do S2. These, are, these of course are the default uh, settings for these S parameters. So to actually uh, do the programming, like, like I mentioned, to get familiar with the programming or the, the keystrokes of the keypad, which is really the most important thing about this, is uh, using these, these soft keys. So the up or down arrow key, either going up or down, will give you a round robin as far as the different values, different parameters, different accesses to the various groups within the VFD. So we keep scrolling up. And it'll eventually come back around to that F screen or that home screen that I mentioned. Here it is right there. That's going up. We can do the same thing by going down. Same exact round robin, but obviously going in the opposite direction. Pretty straightforward. Um, so what's nice about this is that, again, I mentioned that we can do some pro uh, programming. So if we go into the PAR, P-A-R parameters, we can hit the enter key which is the center key right here, and whatever's blinking with your scalper, you can change. What we'll do here real quick is that we'll just change the XL time to, let's see, let's go up to like 30 seconds, just for the heck of it. And the escape key will get us back to that home screen. Hit the escape key. So that's the steps that you need to do for doing any uh, basic programming. We, uh, what we'll do here is that we'll watch this ramp up at a slow rate, at, at that 30 second rate that I programmed. Um, something to show you too is that here's here's some amps. Uh, these This is a default setting. What's nice about this simulator is you can actually play with the current. 
So if you have a, a, an issue um, and you want to see, okay, what's going on or what would happen if, if my drive were to draw um, excessive current, we can actually simulate excessive current too and see what the drive would trip on or how the drive would trip on uh, that the amps. So it's kind of nice. This one here, I'll crank it up and eventually we'll see an OL01 OL trip. We'll reset it and we're back in business again. So that's kind of nice. So you can simulate uh, the uh, output current fault as well. And if you'd like to see what various faults are, let me get back here to the main, main screen. If you want to see what, what an overcurrent actually looks like, I can scroll down here. And over here on this bottom right-hand side, I went from faults to uh, alarms. I um, actually can create a fault. So let me give an overcurrent fault for the heck of it, and you'll see what it actually will look like on the, on the display. It's kind of neat. Again, it, it, what are you seeing in, in the field? We can simulate it here. Sometimes the Yaskawa speak at little O's and big C's. What exactly does that mean? There could be other funky uh, nomenclature in here. Like, I don't understand it. Well, again, we can simulate that here so you can actually see what it means in real world, which is kind of nice. So once you've uh, played around with the drive and you've uh, got the drive to work, uh, you've got the parameters uh, assigned that you're comfortable with, uh, everything seems to be working exactly how you want. You're like, okay, well, instead of writing these down, or maybe you wrote them down as, as you're going through it, but you want some perhaps some nice documentation for what you've just done, you can get out of this and go into the parameter overview. And what this this is actually what Drive Wizard Industrial looks like, believe it or not. And this gives you access to all the different parameters that are in the drive right now. But what I like about this is the modified parameters. And in here, uh, this, these are the parameters that were only changed from default. And since you've done your playing around, you've confident with, of how things are working, um, and now you want this, so when you get your real drive, you, you, you hook it up, you program it in the field, this will give you a nice listing of what you've actually done here in the, in the simulator. So at this point, under the modified parameters, you can actually print this out, or you can export it as a PDF or Excel spreadsheet or all these other various means. So I like this a lot. Again, this looks exactly like uh, Drive Wizard Industrial, and at this point, I would actually print this and keep it hard copy, and I would also uh, keep it as a PDF too. So that'd be something that I would strongly suggest that you do um, if you use this uh, simulator. Thank you for watching this video. I uh, appreciate it. If you have any questions about the simulator, if you have any questions about uh, starting up a VFD, please uh, reach out to me, uh, Mike May or Brian Davis. Thank you.